music a harmonious arrangement of notes in sync it can make you dance with it like beethoven's ode of joy but out of sync it becomes noise and gives you major headaches today we're going to understand a few key concepts in music domain and also be reviewing an interesting paper submitted in archive by facebook ai group titled a universal music translation network now this paper talks about translating instruments from one domain to another without going through the hassles of intermediate transcription it even goes a step ahead to translate domains which it has not seen during the training so the model might not have observed a single flute sample while training but it can still translate the flute rendition into a piano track now that's how powerful the domain generalization is let's say we want to convert the audio of mozart's symphony performed by an orchestra to an audio in the style of pianist playing beethoven a novice like me would be very eager to see it as a transcription problem i would simply find the notes and the chords by the short time fourier transform and then play it with the new instrument if i'm slightly good at music theory then i might learn music transcription using cnns which generates the label via midi format Now MIDI is the standard format in which most of the synthesizers record digital music. Every key pressed and released is an event in MIDI. We have datasets like MAPS which can be used for polyphonic piano transcription problem. If I am an NLP guy, I might use the sequence to sequence model, but then I will need a matching tracks for both behavior and target instruments. But if you are a really good musician, then you understand that the nuances of each instrument cannot be captured in midi that's where the novelty of the paper lies it models orchestra to pianist conversion problem as an unsupervised learning problem in this approach noa metal borrows the auto regressive architecture from the wavenets and makes use of it to convert the problem into what's next note kind of problem this makes it unsupervised now i won't go into the details of wavenet because i have another video for that But in short, the first experiment conducted on WaveNet was to learn the patterns of human speech for a realistic TTS. In speech, you can look into the theory of linear predictors and jargons like LPC, where the next input is a linear combination of previous inputs. But WaveNet's rock because of the dilated convolutions along with the learned gates which lead to an increased receptive field and therefore better prediction and richer latent space of hidden vectors. These features are the ones which capture the essence of human voice or music just like feature maps in CNNs. Now if you want to learn an auto regressive model for predicting piano's next sample then you will simply learn the wavenet encoder and decoder. The encoder here will project the previous sequence into the latent space. The decoder will then try to make sense of the hidden vectors in the latent space to decode the next value in the sequence. But wouldn't it be wonderful if the model could encode for piano and decode for some other instrument? A class conditional auto regressive model? Well, that's what the Facebook AI group did. Noa Metal trains multiple instrument domains on the same encoder and has different decoders for each class. Now you'd be wondering how it helps, right? But the shared encoder forces it to learn common features. We still need to tell that this was piano and not orchestra. For this we have domain confusion network which makes it understand the class. Let's have a look at the objective function. We pick the sample hj from domain j and then do a random pitch shift to avoid no brainer memorization of the data by the model. In the paper they mention that this random pitch shift of -0.5 to +0.5 of the half steps is done for the samples in 0.25 to 0.5 seconds. This is represented by o of sj, r where r is the random seed now you might be wondering what's the big deal here but those who have worked with google magenta or any temporal generative model know about the curse of imitation sometimes the model like many of the students starts doing rote learning they start exact memorization or overfitting the sequence quite often and that's why the augmentation process is very crucial we then let the augmented input through the dilated convolutions of wavenet encoder to move into the latent space and then back to the original space via domain specific decoder dj to obtain the predictions for the next values we compare the predicted next values with the actual values via cross entropy loss as an adversary or counter objective 
we also have a supervised regularization term which tries to predict the domain based on the latent representation. They call it domain confusion network. The inference is pretty straightforward here. We just fix the decoder DJ as per our target domain J. So you feed it orchestra track, it gives you back the piano equivalent. But here's the coolest part. If you feed an unseen instrument to the model and follow the autoencoding process with decoders of instrument J, then it still works approximately, which is super awesome. Of course, it doesn't work all the time, but this means that the encoder has truly generalized the latent representation across the seen and unseen domains, which is something I got to study in detail. So that's it for now. You can check out the demo video by clicking on the links in the description. You can share it with your friends who are working in speech processing or music language modeling. So see you next time. And don't forget to subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update from Crazy Muse.